LS turbo motors and rec port heads. Here's the question. Can you successfully run 823 or 821 LS3 LY6 factory rec port heads on your turbo LS? And the second question, every bit as important, is should you? In this video, we're going to take a look at a comparison we did between a set of 317 LS Cathedral port heads and a set of 821 or 823 LS3 or LY6 rec port heads. So here's the question. We ran this NA and we also ran it turbocharged. So was there any difference between the cylinder heads NA? And keep in mind with the fact that we ran these 317 heads, we augmented them with a fast intake manifold where we ran the factory LS3 intake manifold on the LS3 heads. So was there any difference NA? Was there any difference turbocharged? And do you really need ported heads on your turbo motor? Let's check it out. In this video, we're going to take a look at not just a comparison between the 317 Cathedral Port Head and an 823 or an 821 factory rec port head, but it also shows that the rec port head, that LS3 style rec port head, is the most powerful factory head you can run on that we ran it on a 6.2 liter combination, but you can also that also carries over to the smaller 6 liter bore because you can run that factory rec port head on a 6 liter bore. And I know guys will mention, oh well, but what about a an LS7 head? Well, you you can't run an LS7 head on a 6 liter so and and obviously those are very very hard to come by and they're a lot more expensive than an LY6 you can get for you know for next to nothing so that's actually a very good head but the question is we all know that we run lots of different cathedral port heads on turbo applications but what about running a rec port the the big <laughs> the large size intake port on a turbo application does it work well and the reality is as we've shown you with camshafts and intake manifolds whatever it does NA it will also do under boost and this is this test is a perfect example and this is actually a redo from a test that I did previously and I only did it as a two or three minute video and unfortunately there's so much information here and actually my opinion about stuff has kind of changed since I did that first video and we'll talk a little bit about that when we get into the turbo stuff but what I did was we had an LS3 crate motor and it was a cammed LS3 crate motor we can take a look at the specs on that combination but it was a 6.2 liter bore um, it's a stock bottom end. It had a comp, a healthy comp cam. It was the 469 that I run in a lot of stuff. It was a 54 469-11. That was a 613-623 lift and a 231-243 degree duration and 113 degree lobe separation angle. We had uh, standard length push rods in it, but they were hardened. We had inch and 7 eighths headers. We had a... Uh, factory LS3 intake manifold on it when we ran the cathedral port stuff and a fast LSXRT when we ran the 317 heads. And I know everyone's going to get all up in arms. Well, why did you use a fast intake on the 317 heads and use a stock LS3 on the rec port heads? And here's my answer. If you were to compare independently, if you were to compare a factory LS3 intake to a fast LS3 intake on this kind of combination, there'd be no difference in power. The FAST doesn't offer any gain really over a factory LS3. On a cathedral port application, the FAST intake does offer a gain. So basically, the factory truck intake or even a Trailblazer SS would be holding back the power output of the 317 heads, whereas a factory LS3 intake does not hold back the power output of an LS3 cylinder head. So that's why we ran them. But but please note, and you guys should obviously understand, that were we to run a truck intake or a Trailblazer SS, the power output offered by a 317 head would be even less than what we're showing here. The other thing to consider is when we run comparisons of the 317 head, which is kind of the low compression deal, versus any of the other cathedral port heads, we have a big change in compression. But we don't have that here because both of the chambers on the 317 head and on the LS3 head are near 70 cc's. I think that the difference was about 1 cc or so. So there's almost no change in compression between these two. What we have is a big change in airflow. Uh, in terms of peak airflow, we have about 315 CFM offered by the rec port head. Just bone stock all we did was change the valve springs on them and then we have about 244 cfm for the 317 head so we have about 70 cc's per runner in favor of the of the uh, ls3 rec port heads so what i what i did was we compared these two heads both na 
and then also with a single turbo because I wanted to show you that they do basically like we do with the intakes and the camshafts that they do basically the same thing but then we're going to talk about <laughs> is it really necessary to upgrade the heads on your turbo application and that's where the difference is now but here's what happened when we ran our our LS3 basically crate motor with a set of 317 heads, the fast 102 millimeter throttle body, inch and seven eighths headers. When we ran this thing NA, it made 551 horsepower. So it did fairly well. That's a pretty good power output. Um, if you do the multiplication for uh, 244 CFM um, and you multiply that out or divide that by 551, you'll see how much power we made per CFM. And that's always a fairly good indication. This thing made 507 foot pounds of torque. But here's what happened when we ran it with the factory LS3 heads. And there's no difference between an LS3 head, an 821 and an 823. You have a little bit of a difference in the valve weight. But since we're only, we're not even, we ran this thing to about 7,000 RPM, um, the valve weight doesn't come into play. And I don't think you'd see much in the way of power from the difference in just the valve weight. Uh, but here's what happened when we ran the rec port heads. And as you can see, they did kind of what you would expect. Um, a cylinder head that has a lot more flow, uh, it, it made more power. This thing made 584 horsepower and peak torque was up as well to 526 foot pounds. But if you can see down low, the 317 head made uh, basically the same power as the higher flowing head from about 3000 to 4000 or 4100 rpm so and and we've seen this time and time again that the cathedral port head stuff does better down low in that range and then in this case the rec port head offered quite a bit more power so now that we've seen what they do na let's take a look and see what happened when we added a single turbo to this After comparing the 317 heads to the LS3 heads on our naturally aspirated LS3, basically with a cam, we decided to add boost to the equation. What I did was added a single turbo with my super custom turbo kit. And what it was is a Precision 7675. And I've got other videos up on that turbo. It's one we've used a lot. We had an air to water intercooler. We ran this on... Uh, race gas 100 octane it had uh, a timing curve you guys want to talk about that all the time we had a peak of 20 degrees of timing we had down below the torque peak we had 16 or 17 and it kind of ramped up they both used exactly the same timing curve they both had the same air fuel and we are going to i'm going to show you the boost curves offered by both of them what we did was we had two Turbo Smart waste gates, we ran them on the gates with no controller on them, and that turned out to be eh, maybe not ideal. <laughs> we should always use an electronic controller, but this test was run long ago before we even had the TC1, so obviously we would run it a little bit differently, but it still is going to tell us kind of exactly what happened. But here's what happened. This was at about 7 pounds, right? 6.9 or so. These This uh, turbocharged kind of uh, 317 with the fast intake and the comp cam, with six and a half or 6.9 pounds of boost produced 806 horsepower and 746 horsepower. So you can see if you have any kind of like six liter cam, six liter, and you add boost to it, you start making a lot of power pretty quickly. So that's the other takeaway from this, in addition to the comparison that we're doing on the cylinder heads. So that was with the 317 head. Here's what happened when we installed the LS3 head. We made 826 horsepower and peak torque was up to 771 foot pounds of torque. But as I said, we ran these just on the gate and I'm going to show you the difference in the boost curve between the two because the problem with waste gates is that they, <laughs> they work on a kind of on a pressure differential between the back pressure and then the boost pressure. And in this case, there was no, 
there was no, uh, I mean, we just had the, the reference line running from the intake manifold over to the bottom of the wastegate. So we have pressure going to that portion of the wastegate to that diaphragm, but we also have an increase in back pressure. And why would we get an increase in back pressure? Because we have more power. So we have more exhaust flow going through the system because the power went up. And I'm going to show you what happened to the booster. But even here, we can see that the LS3 head, the one that makes more power NA, also makes more power under boost if we run that at the same boost. But I want to talk to you about that. Let's take a look at the boost curves and we can go over all the rest. So now that we've taken a look at the power output and the comparison NA between the 317 and the LS3 head, and then turbo charge between the 317 and the LS3 head, let's take a look at the boost curves and I'll show you what happened and we can kind of talk about that a little bit. Here's the boost curve supplied on our single turbo application running with the 317 heads. We uh, started out about 7.45 pounds, rose to a little over 7.6, and then it dropped off down to about 6.9. And that's with the 317 heads. Again, that's with two uh, Turbo Smart waste gates and just referen li reference lines run to the bottom of the gates. No controller whatsoever. Here's what happened when we put the LS3 heads on, and the LS3 heads are now in red. Uh, we had lower boost pressure on the setup with the LS3 heads and that and you might be thinking well why is that the case because it it made more power and that's actually exactly why <laughs> we have a lower uh, boost pressure what what I can do here is if I add um what I'll show you is the back pressure and the back pressure will explain all of this to us so let's take a look at that we can take a look at our uh, channel order if I can get this thing to so now we have our boost pressure down here. These are the kind of flat lines down here. And the blue is the 317 head. The red is the LS3 head. And we have our back pressure going up. We have a rising back pressure curve. We have it, it's about um, two to one. So we had 14, a little over 14 pounds of back pressure at, our, at about seven pounds or a little bit less on the LS3. But as we can see, the back pressure with the LS3 head is higher than it is with the 317 head. And the reason for that is not because of, of cylinder head design or a rec port or cathedral port. It's simply because the LS3 head makes more power <laughs> at the same boost level, or in this case, slightly less boost. It has more back pressure. And the problem with having a little bit more back pressure is that it wants to open the gate earlier. That's the thing. This back pressure is pushing on the, on the valve, basically, on the bottom side of the valve, and wanting to open the gate. So it opens at an earlier rate, even though we have the same reference line and the same spring pressure on it. We have added back pressure, which wants to open the gate. So we have less pressure. So what happens is, the the LS3, were we to run a consistent boost pressure to both of these, the LS3 head would make even more power. The difference between the three, the LS3 head and the 317 head would be even greater that, that we showed there. It, it'd be the NA difference times the boost times 1.5, basically, in this case, because we had about 7 pounds. So if you make more power NA, then you will make more power under boost. <laughs> That's all kind of logic. But here's the question. The question isn't whether better heads flow more and make more power and then make more power under boost. The, the, the answer to that is obviously yes. The question here is, would you need to upgrade your heads? Let's say that you had an iron six liter, which would be much more common than an LS3 because those are kind of high dollar aluminum motors. But if you had a six liter or even a 5.3, would you need to upgrade the head? So if you had a six liter with a 317 head, would it benefit you to put a ported uh, or, or, a, or a stock LS3 head or a ported 317 or a ported 799? And here's my question to you. If we have a turbo like this 7675 or an S475 or a 7875 um, a VS racing turbo or something that's the thousand horsepower range, do you need to upgrade the head? And I've kind of always been in the camp that, yes, we need to do everything that we can to improve the power output of the NA motor so that we can make more power at a lower boost level. And that comes from my days way back being in the 5 liter camp and having a Vortec on it and having a very inefficient 5 liter motor. And so we wanted to do everything that we could because it was a cool thing to have the power go up and the boost go down, both of which are desirable. But on this turbo combination where the turbo is ultimately going to determine the power, 
I'm not sure you even need to upgrade the heads. You certainly don't, I don't think, for a thousand horsepower combination. So honestly, even though an LS3 head definitely is an upgrade and it makes more power than a 317, it also makes more power than a 799. It's the most powerful stock head that you can put on a six liter, even if that's the case. I don't really think that you need it <laughs> to get everything that you need to get out of, say, a thousand horsepower turbo, which is what a lot of guys would be running. Now, if you're trying to make the maximum amount of power, then obviously a head is going to come into play there. And I think that a rec port head certainly works well. It makes a lot more power than these cathedral port heads. Now, if you run a ported cathedral port head or, and or a ported rec port head, maybe we have a whole new test. But for most of the combinations where guys are just running this thousand horsepower kind of turbo or something a little bigger like this um, this precision turbo that we ran is probably more like a 1200 horsepower turbo. If you're running something like that and then the turbo ultimately dictates the power, let me know in the comments. What do you guys think? Do you need to upgrade the head? Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do you think about the comparison between the 317 heads and the Recport LS3 heads on our cammed LS3? What did you guys think? Big change NA? big change boosted, but I know everyone's going to have the same question. Yeah, Richard, you ran 317s, but what if I ran a set of 799s or 243s? Yes, those would make a little more power than 317s because the compression will be slightly higher, so they'll make a little bit more, but they will not make as much power as the 823 or the factory rec port heads because they don't have the airflow. There's still a difference of about 70 CFM, so while they may, might make a little bit more than 317s, they're just not going to do what that rec port head does, and that's not really the question. Question. We kind of already knew that, at least if you guys don't know, you should know that. If you have a 6 liter, you need to put 823 heads on, those will make the most power of any factory head. So the question becomes, do you really need those on your turbo board? If you have a turbo that's only sized to make a thousand horsepower, you can make a thousand horsepower with any of the factory cylinder heads. You can put a 706 on a 241, a 799, 243, a 317, or as we've shown here, even these 821 or 823 rec board heads. All of those factory heads will allow you to get where you need to go. So the question is, if you already have a set of cylinder heads that will get you to the power level that you need to, to top out that turbo, do you really need to upgrade them? Camshaft, definitely yes. Cylinder heads, I don't really think so. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.